in the Sustainable Development Goals, we are saying we should leave no one behind and start with the fathers first. Innovation is a key part of um, the recovery process. We set up the first assistive tech accelerator in Africa uh, to support innovators who are building technology to support persons living with disability. Anybody who is interested in trying a person with disability in employment, contact us. We work like thrice as hard. We have to remember that is 15% of the population that's being left out if your products and services are not accessible. We are a network uh, comprising of uh, close to 30 disability focused organizations in the country uh, where I'm the chairperson uh, coordinating uh, you know, programs that we are having in education in uh, health and also protection, which covers also social protection. I'm a trained teacher by profession, uh, having uh, done special needs education. Uh, did some uh, teaching, uh, but not for a very long time, handling children with uh, special needs. Uh, and uh, after that, then I moved uh, to work with uh, NGOs, uh, which are, are basically having programs to empower the vulnerable people in the communities that are uh, including persons with uh, disabilities and in this case children with disabilities. So that in itself creates, uh, created a, an, a passion in me to see how we can uh, improve and serve uh, children with disabilities much more better in the areas of education uh, and especially in this era when we are talking about inclusive education. So looking at it, is our education system really inclusive to the extent that uh, children with disabilities would find it easily accessible and can attain good quality outcomes from that system. the word animals, insects and birds in their natural habitat. It also includes plants. So in Kenya, we are blessed because we have a lot of wildlife. And many tourists usually come to our country to see wildlife. Wildlife includes animals. Give me an example of an animal that you think is wildlife. Yes? Elephant. Elephant. Very good. Giraffe. Giraffe. Good. Lion. Antero. Antero. How many of you have seen these animals? How many have seen an elephant? Who has seen an elephant? You've seen an elephant? Good. You've seen? A lion. You've seen a lion? You've seen? Lion. Elephant. Yes? Cheetah. Cheetah. So today we have some guests and these guests are Dennis and Samson. They have some machines and they are going to help us to see those animals in their natural habitat. These machines will make us actually experience as if we are in those places. Places like Mount Kenya, places like Nairobi National Park. How many of you have been to Nairobi National Park? Yes, Masai Mara. How many have been to Masai Mara? You've been to Masai Mara? Good. Now with these machines, we are going to experience as if we are in Masai Mara or as if we are driving Mount Kenya on top of Mount Kenya just when we are here. Okay? So I want now to introduce these two guests. They come and then they, they are going to come with their machines and we are going to be picking one person at a time so that we have this experience. Dennis and Samson, welcome. Yeah, so we have some machines here. These machines are known as virtual reality. So we will have uh, two people that uh, we are going to test on so that you can experience uh, what teacher was telling us about the wildlife. 
hold this one and adjust this. You tell me if that's okay. If you see any writings on the on the screen, you yeah. you read it because we'll ask you some questions after that. You can turn round and see what is there. Zebras, the great migration wild beast, and zebras occur from July, September, as they. that you see. So now let me remove you so that you can be able to tell us what is Wow. Remove the mask. Good. You're back here. Yes. Will you call me on the safari? <laughs> we are going for a journey. You saw animals? Yes. Uh-huh. You are somewhere in Masai Mara? Yes. And you saw some uh, water falling in a waterfall? Yes. Good. <laughs> so Tristan, tell me about the experience. It was like real. Like real? Yeah. What did you like about it? Even somewhere that I did not know before. Yeah. Yeah. What did you like about the whole experience? What's, what's your favorite site? Seeing animals and the waterfalls. Were well, they far from you or near, near, near to you? Near to you. They were very near to you. Have you ever been in such close contact with the cheetahs and, and the elephants? You've never been? So, okay, fine. What else did you see? Did you see... Yes? Forest. Forest. Okay. Did you see a mountain? Yeah. Which mountain is that? It was a hill. That is Mount Kenya. Okay? Have you ever been to Mount Kenya? That is Mount Kenya. What else did you see? I heard that you were somewhere inside with the fish. What was that? Yes? You were in the water. Okay, what was happening inside the water? There were fish. Yeah, there were fish. Action for Children with Disabilities, uh, we came up with a, a virtual reality uh, uh, pilot uh, project, so to say, uh, with the aim of testing uh, how we can deploy virtual reality to educate learners with disabilities. Uh, we had a focus on learners with intellectual disabilities at the beginning, which is uh, really looking at uh, children that uh, have autism, children that have uh, dyslexia and other intellectual conditions that would uh, maybe limit their level of understanding, uh, retention of knowledge, memory and such kind of thing. So uh, what we've done is uh, we've uh, developed some content uh, which we've put in a, in a virtual reality headset, uh, the one that I'm holding on my hand. And now with this content we are able to take uh, some, scene, some scenes, either from social studies, environmental studies, or geography, uh, we are able to take these scenes to the classrooms where the children are, recognizing that uh, children with disabilities miss out on a number of opportunities when it comes to some of these practical learning experiences. For instance, you would find that uh, when a school is organizing our children to go out for an excursion, maybe to the national park, for some reason, uh, you'd find some teachers having maybe some difficulty allowing a child with uh, autism to accompany them. Or even a parent would be kind of scared 
don't know how the child would react so would opt out and say that oh, no just leave my child as uh, uh, in school or at home as the others are going so that way in itself is really denying that child a very useful experience otherwise a right which is uh, supposed to access and uh, limits even his performance and understanding of the environment around him so with this uh, uh, gadget the virtual reality uh, gadget headset we are able to uh, aggregate content uh, from uh, maybe wildlife as a subject area of focus, uh, maybe the ocean or the coastal sceneries uh, as an area of uh, focus, maybe forests, we are teaching about forests, we are teaching about deserts, you know, Chaubi Desert and the rest. We are able to get those images in 360 uh, degrees, put them into the, head, uh, the VR headset, and take the set to the child where he is and uh, once the child wears this uh, headset and uh, it keeps rolling the child will get immersed into that environment otherwise you would have missed uh, going to see in the national park so it, it gives you a, an experience an immersive experience which makes you feel that actually you are right in that national park that sense is the one that we are saying that for a child with disability who has challenges in uh, retention, uh, in memory, in recalling, it would aid in creating that imagery in the brain of that child and we believe that uh, it will take longer for to erase that kind of experience. Worldwide we see that virtual reality has been used in other sectors apart from uh, movies and also entertainment so to say. We've seen it being used at higher levels of education, for example, in universities, where, you know, uh, in, for example, in the medical school, you can be, it's being used to teach the students how to do procedures like surgeries. In engineering, it is being used there. In car assembly plants, it's being used to, you know, teach the students how to uh, assemble a car and that, and that kind of thing. So for us, we looked at it that, uh, the virtual reality, yes, very good uh, uh, experience, but uh, the level of application is far away beyond the reach of the majority where they are. So we thought, how can we now customize this, bring it to the education sector, and even bring it much lower to the basic education level. Piloting this uh, uh, use of virtual reality has taken us uh, uh, three months now. Uh, we, we, we got support from uh, UNDP, uh, Kenya, uh, and it is through a challenge that we participated in. Uh, they were seeking, uh, UNDP was seeking uh, for innovations, ideas uh, that can uh, inclu make inclusion for persons for disability, persons with disability. Uh, achievable so to, so to say or promote inclusion of persons with disabilities so we made an application and pitched for uh, for this uh, and uh, luckily it caught their eye and uh, we we were able to be one of the finalists uh, among several applicants we were told so so five of us made it to to, to the final and receive a, a grant uh, now, with that kind of support, we are able to bring on board other teams, other partners, uh, to uh, now even explain the, the idea that we had to them, uh, and then see how we can complement uh, ourselves in terms of our expertise to package all this together and end up with what we have now. Uh, we brought up uh, some creati a creative company which uh, is in charge of now aggregating uh, the, the content from their stocks and uh, everywhere because one of the conditions within the, the challenge was to use uh, open source uh, you know, information. So that meant that uh, we had to get uh, a, a company, uh, a creative company that is uh, applies these kind of uh, issues. Uh, put the information together, of course with our guidance. We did the first uh, drafts of the content, we reviewed them of course, uh, we consulted uh, teachers. Uh, one of the t institutions that we consulted the teachers is uh, this lecture organization Kenya, which runs this uh, the school, a rare gem talent school. 
uh, to just give us some feedback in terms of uh, which other areas they thought uh, we could focus on. Uh, with that, uh, we were able to uh, engage with the creatives uh, again so that uh, we edit accordingly so that it fits within the time that uh, we, we wanted it to fit. We started this organization with my sister, my twin sister, who is also having a child with dyslexia. At the time we, st we were starting, the, we were fi found it, finding out uh, this uh, dyslexia organization. There was no one in the country talking about dyslexia. We realized that our children had uh, limit, they were limited in learning and especially in reading and uh, spelling. And during that time there was a harshness in school for children who are not able to read. And as a teacher, and a special needs teacher, I realized that um, it's not only my own son, but in the same class that I was teaching, there were quite a number of other students. So we decided on, uh, uh, we, we thought of how we can reach out to so many other parents who are going through the same difficulties that we were going, and that's why we started this Lex Organization Kenya in 2010. Yeah, it is registered with, uh, in, with the NGOs. Uh, but uh, after creating awareness using media, women groups, churches, and schools, we realized there was a gap that uh, as much as we told the parents about uh, children having difficulty, there was no support in school. So we were motivated to start a school, and two years after the registration of District Organization Kenya, we registered uh, or we started a Rear Gem Talent School. Dyslexia is a condition that uh, impairs somebody from reading, writing and spelling, and sometimes they have uh, processing, information processing is slow. In our classes, we have children with the, actually we have children with dyslexia, children with mainstream, uh, uh, legular ability, that's what I call them. And uh, what we do, we measure on individualization. So as much as we are planning for the whole class, there is that uh, plan for a child or the children who have learning difficulties such that the teacher is going to reach out to them as an individual. So where are you now? It is like bringing the world in and, and fitting it in a class and bringing the different uh, parts of the learning in, in, in reality. I have uh, I've seen it's, it's awesome. I think uh, it is something that can help the children and it has, like uh, we have seen with our students, like I was thinking of how we teach and tell children about coronaries. Now, this one, they have seen it and they have seen where we tell them coralies is found in in ocean that is something that is uh, it, it doesn't exist in, in in their mind but now using this technology they have seen and like they teach you know i feel like you are in the room or you are in uh, not in the room you are in the national park and you are there so yeah it's it's, it's fantastic the ministry has a standalone policy known as the sector policy for learners and trainees with disabilities that was actually launched by His Excellency the President of Kenya in May 2018. And this policy document provides for all those dimensions and aspects of inclusive education with regard to learners with disabilities. So it provides for access, it provides for their functional assessment, and it provides for the required resources and technologies that they need uh, to access quality education in the different schools. Additional funding has been um, uh, allocated to support uh, learners with disabilities. So that, and, and, and even in terms of teachers, we have quite a number of teachers who have undergone specialized training so that they are able to support um, learners with the different disabilities and, and other special needs. We have, as a ministry, uh, planned for the rollout 
of that policy and there are certain things that are already happening. For instance, in this country, a child cannot be sent away, denied admission to any institution on account of his or her disability. There's always room for improvement. So I would say more of a multidisciplinary approach when working with children with special needs. It would be lovely to have uh, a whole team working with the children, starting from the special needs teachers, followed by the interpreters, followed by the occupational therapist, the physiotherapist, the speech and language therapist, and uh, the various learning mentors. So if we can have a multidisciplinary team approach when it comes to inclusion, when they're in, in schools, it can be really good. Talking to the different partners that we've engaged with um, over the course of this innovation challenge, um, one thing has come out that there are not as many players who are specifically focused on disability inclusive innovations. So you have people working in the innova innovation space, but it's kind of like for the general audience. Um, but for this innovation challenge, we wanted um, innovations that were specific to people with disabilities and preferably being driven by people with disabilities. So perhaps that may have been um, an opportunity for us to see, is it that we do not know what is out there or how can we then um, encourage more innovators who are coming into this space to see that there is opportunity here that you can focus on this demographic um, and, and come up with you know, solutions that can grow beyond um, ideas. Innovation is a critical and technology innovation is a huge enabler for recovery and Kenya being uh, uh, an innovation hub on the continent it is here where we can see that digital disruption uh, come to reality. We've supported the great COVID-19 uh, innovation challenge, uh, the disability challenge and all of those created um, uh, pipelines for investments in new and innovative ways of addressing traditional problems. So we, are, we see innovation and digital as another foundation for building forward better. We work on uh, human rights and democracy. It's a big program where we also include um, gender issues, of course, um, um, the, the, the issue of disabilities, HBTQ, I issues and uh, accountability and others. We also have um, uh, another um, area where we work on environment and climate change and energy um, uh, production, where we also include now biodiversity. And then we have a last field, which is really in the economic field on in inclusive um, uh, uh, production and um, sustaining both agriculture and other types of economic activities.